Hello guys, I should gameplays, I'm Fabio Pisco and welcome to my channel. And this is my cat. Yeah, my little small cat that oh <laughs> that has been sick for quite a while uh, and is now quite fine. As for this video, I bring you a new CPU comparison, this time a Ryzen 7 5700X 3D, 8 cores, 16 threads with 3D cache from the previous generation, still available to buy right now, versus the Ryzen 5 7600X, so no 3D cache, versus the Ryzen 5 7600X 3D. And I know this one is really tricky to get, but if you are in Europe, for example, you can get it on Mind Factory Germany, and if you are in USA, you can also get it in Micro Center. So, there's no issue there. Once again, Zen 3, 8 cores, 16 threads, 3D cache versus Zen 4, 6 cores, 12 threads, 3D cache. Which one will perform better? But well, before going into the benchmarks, let's talk about pricing. If we're talking about America, you can get right now the Ryzen 7 5700X 3D for roughly $210, the 7600X for around $194, and the 7600X 3D for roughly $299. If we're talking about European prices at Mind Factory Germany, you have the Ryzen 7 5700X 3D at €204, Euros, the Ryzen 5 7600X at €196 Euros, and the Ryzen 5 7600X 3D at €289. Euros. So in terms of pricing, they're basically the same as of now, as of this day. They are basically the same in between Europe and America. So the question still stands. Is the Ryzen 5 7600X 3D really worth the upgrade over the 7600X or especially the 5700X 3D? Let's find out. But before, today's video sponsor is GVG Mall, bringing you lots of software deals like Windows 10, Windows 11, Office 2019 or 2021 with a new Windows 11 design. And for all of these, you can use my SKG discount code for 30% off, getting a Windows 11 serial key for $22 and a Windows 10 one for only $15. Then use the key on your Windows settings and you'll have an activated system. Starting with the productivity benchmarks, we have Photoshop with a budget benchmark. And we can immediately see the 7600X 3D is around 14% faster than the 5700X 3D, even though it has less cores and threads, and that the 7600X is the fastest CPU, being 8% faster than the 7600X 3D and 23% faster than the 5700X 3D, even without overclocking and with less cores and so on, so on, so on. Premiere, though, is a bit different, but the results are basically the same, with the 7600X being the fastest CPU here, as it has a higher boost frequency, and since the software doesn't really care much about cache, well, yeah, the X3 CPUs have no edge here. As for Blender, the 7600X is still the fastest CPU, but since Blender can make use of all cores and threads here, the 5700X 3D is now virtually on par with the 7600X 3D. This is because even though it is from the previous generation and features lower frequencies, it has two cores and four threads more, which makes it on par with some Ryzen 5 CPUs from the newer generation. And that is shown once more with Cinebench R24, where even though the 5700X 3D is 23% slower than the 7600X 3D in single core performance, it is 1% faster in multi core. With the 7600X performing quite well here in this regard, being 8% faster than the 5700X 3D, even in terms of multi-core performance, and 38% faster in single-core performance. And in AI with a UL ProSign computer vision benchmark, one would have thought that the AI cores on the Ryzen 7000 series would bring some benefit, but not really. It seems that AI cares a lot about latencies and core counts, and that is why the, the 5700X 3D sorry, is the fastest CPU here, and even the 7600X 3D is faster than its non-3D variant, because 
The more cache you have, the less you have to use the RAM. That is much slower than the L3 cache. And 7-zip, well, I must say this is one of the most messed up result charts I've seen in quite a while. We have the 5700X3D being the fastest CPU when it comes to decompression, because it has more cores, but when it comes to compression, since it uses DDR4, it is considerably slower than the 7600X. And that I can understand. What I can't understand is how we actually have the 7600X3D performing better in compression than decompression when using the tweaked timings. This is something that I've never seen before. So with 7-zip, the 7600X3D is not only the worst performer of the three, but also the strangest one when it comes to results. And now we're in the gaming sector and finally the X3D CPUs start showing their power, with the 5700X3D being slightly faster than the 7600X in Acero Corsa and the 7600X3D absolutely destroying the other two CPUs, being 28% faster than the 5700X3D and 37% faster than the 7600X. In The Witcher 3 things change a bit, with the 7600X now matching the 5700X3D with the lowest RAM configuration, but outperforming it when we tweak the timings, that as explained in the intro, are basically copy-paste from the Buildzoids video passing right now on the screen. Here the 7600X3D is 30% faster than the 5700X3D and 23% faster than the 7600X. Great results as well. Counter-Strike 2 is one of those games that allow you to find your inner child and then fight with another inner child of a grown man that somehow, thousands of miles away, slept with your mother. As for the results that are, <laughs> that are closer now, with the 7600X being again faster than the 5700X3D. I believe that happens because Counter-Strike 2 loves frequency as well, something that the 5700X3D lacks with its 4GHz boost. And that's exactly the reason why even the 7600X3D is only 9% faster. Hogwarts Legacy, on the other hand, puts us back on track. And again, the 7600X outmatches the 5700X3D, now by 13%. As for the 7600X3D, it is 16% faster than the 7600X and 31% faster than the 5700X3D. Microsoft Flight Simulator is also an annoying title to test, as some updates reduce the performance, then the other ones put it back up, and we go with this zigzag over and over again. As for performance though, we can see the 5700X3D now surpassing the stock Expo 7600X by 7% and being virtually on par with it when tweaked, which is cool to see. With the 7600X3D being again the fastest CPU here, around 19% faster than the other two CPUs. Banisher's Ghost of New Eden is another awesome title that uses Unreal Engine 5, and as a pure heart Unreal Engine 5 title, it has a dumb CPU bottleneck in the village areas, where there aren't even that many NPCs. But anyway, the 5700X3D is now performing again on par with the tweaked 7600X, gaining no performance whatsoever when using 3600 megatransfers per second RAM, while even, well, the 7600X3D shows an improvement when using lower timings in this game, which isn't something common with the X3D CPUs. Hitman 3 is one of those benchmarks that has a higher margin of error, and that's exactly why we see the 7600X3D having lower results with tweaked timings while the other CPUs perform better with tweaked RAM. Even though this happens, the 7600X3D is still 21% faster than the 7600X, get, that gets a really nice boost with overclocking here, and 14% faster than the 5700X3D. That in this game is faster than the 7600X, in all case scenarios, since this game can really make a good use of the extra cores and threads. Cool results. Homeworld 3 brings us around the same, with the 5700X3D winning over the 7600 at full stock, but losing slightly with weak timings, and the 7600X3D being again the fastest CPU, now by at least 19%, which is nothing astonishing, but definitely worth it, especially considering it performs very well even without tweaking. 
And as we go to The Last of Us, we have some really interesting results. This game kind of makes very good use of cache and latency. But you know what this game also loves? Everything. This game absolutely loves cache, latency, RAM and especially cores and threads. And that's why the 7600X is faster than the 5700X 3D. But the 7600X 3D is barely faster than the 7600X. And you might think this is a GPU bottleneck, but no. The 7600X 3D is just limited here because of the core amount and frequency and so on, not being able to make proper use of the extra cache. Because as soon as we go to the 7800X 3D that has more cores and threads, we have it being 11% faster, with the 9800X 3D also being 22% faster. Proving, of course, it was not a GPU bottleneck scenario. Far Cry 6 is more of the same here when it comes to that feud in between the 5700X 3D and the 7600X, with the 7600X 3D delivering, as expected, the best results, being around 21% faster than the other two CPUs. Yeah, that's my cat. In Cyberpunk 2077, the 5700X 3D takes the lead over the 7600X in all scenarios, delivering a very decent 107 FPS, but with the 7600X 3D, even with less cores and threads, delivering 127, being 18% faster, which again is not that much. But considering that when taking off the platform cost, the 5700X 3D costs quite less, it is doing a very good job. Another game where the 5700X 3D dominates over the 7600X is in Marvel Spider-Man. Firstly, because it has more cores and threads, and secondly because of cache, and we know the cores and threads matter a lot here just by looking at the results, where the 7600X 3D is only 8% faster than the 5700X 3D, which is quite low. The difference does get a little smudged when, the, when we enable ray tracing, with the 7600X gaining some margin and the 5700X 3D being even close to the 7600X 3D. Ray tracing in this game is very RAM centered as well, so we need to consider that without tweaking, the 7600X is 18% slower than the 5700X 3D and 26% slower than the 7600X 3D. Plague Tale Requiem is one of those titles that is absolutely worth playing for the story, graphics and voice acting. This is a game where RAM matters quite a lot and the 7600X performs, well, quite well, being even faster than the 5700X 3D at stock versus stock. The 7600X 3D is once again the fastest CPU here, but with all CPUs delivering very good results. Good results that also show themselves in Need for Speed Unbound, where the 5700X 3D is outperforming the 7600X once again, with the 7600X 3D being the fastest CPU, but with all CPUs delivering an outstanding performance of at least 160 average FPS when driving around the city, which I assume to be more than enough for 99% of people. As for the averages, we do have some good results, with the 5700X 3D being faster than the 7600X stock versus stock, but with the tweak timings helping the non-3D CPU immensely, making it generally on par with the 5700X 3D when it was losing by quite a lot before. And as for the 7600X 3D, it is obviously the best performer, delivering up to 20% better performance on average than the 5700X 3D and also 24% faster stock versus stock than the 7600X, as the 3D CPUs don't care so much about RAM tweaking since they use RAM considerably less for repetitive tasks such as gaming, because they have way more cash. And just to finalize, we have some data on the power draw, which is also one of the 7600X 3D's strongest points. It does not only perform considerably better in terms of gaming, but also consumes less power in every possible scenario tested. Is it more expensive? A bit. But it will deliver better performance, lower power draw and lower temperatures compared to the non-3D variant, losing only in productivity. But let's talk more about that in the final thoughts. And well guys, as you saw, the results are self-explanatory. The 7600X in some scenarios is actually very good. And if we, if we think about price performance, 
I believe that the 7600X is the best price performance that you can get because as of now, it is cheaper than the 5700X 3D and at the same time, it is better than the 5700X 3D in most case scenarios, especially if you tweak the timings. And again, the timings are really, really easy to tweak. All you have to do is go to this video passing right now on the screen by Buildzoid. Uh, and it is basically just copy paste the timings. Believe me, I have like five or six different DDR5 kits and all of these kits can use these timings. The same exact thing that Buildzoid said. 99% of users will be able to use these timings or to be fair, sub timings, not timings per se. Timings, you leave them exactly the same, but you change the sub timings and those sub timings are the ones that make the, um, the performance increase the way it does. And that's very, very nice. So just works. Even the Samsung kit, I have a Samsung kit there and it still works with these timings, which is really impressive. So the 7600X, although is not the best performer, it is currently the best price performance CPU that you can get because it is below or really, really close to the $200 mark and it gets really, really good performance in most titles. And again, if you tweak the timings, it is generally equal to the 5700X 3D in some scenarios even better. And if you really, really want the performance, you can go for the 7600X 3D because currently, and sadly, the 7800X 3D is almost out of stock in every single place. And as soon as you try to buy one, they will ask you like 400 bucks, still 400 bucks, 400 and something bucks. And for that same price, you can just get the 9800X 3D. Again, if it is not out of stock, because both the 7800X 3D that just went out of production and the 9800X 3D are kind of out of stock in several places. And if you go right now to Micro Center, you can get the 7600X 3D for roughly $300, so $299. Let's imagine that you are on AM5, but you are really just running, let's say for now, uh, an 8400F, which is roughly faster than the 5600X. Or let's say that you have a 7500F, but you want just a bit more. Well, in that regard, if you don't want to go for those higher tier CPUs, you can go for the 7600X 3D. And I'm saying this, but at the same time, if you want more cores and threads, you can also get the 9700X, which will perform considerably better in some scenarios in terms of productivity. It will completely wipe the floor with the 7600X and the 7600X 3D, both. And in terms of gaming, uh, in some case scenarios, the, 90, the 9700X will actually be faster than the 7600X 3D. So there's that as well. And the 9700X is costing, is costing, costing, <laughs> is costing roughly like 350 bucks right now. So. It depends on what you want. In between these three CPUs, best price performance, 7600X. If you're still running on the AM4 socket, so if you have a Ryzen 5000 series, like the 5600X and so on, and you want an upgrade inside the same platform, AM4, the 5700X 3D is definitely the way to go. If you want to go a bit further, if you want to get, let's say, the 7800X 3D, or in some scenarios, the 9800X 3D, but you don't, you, you don't really find any stock and you just want a better CPU for now, you can get the 7600X 3D, but that's about it. Because you have other options as well, like the 9000 series, like the 9700X, and especially, for example, the 9900X that in some scenarios is really, really cheap and we're talking about a 12 cores, 24 thread CPU that you can see the review right here. And believe me, in some case scenarios, it is a really, really good, one of the best price performance chips that you can get right now. But in between these three CPUs, that's it. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share this video. And by the way, thank you, AMD, for sending me the 7600X 3D. Really appreciate it. I, otherwise, I couldn't, I couldn't buy it because Mind Factory Germany doesn't send to Portugal and the same goes for USA and so on. So thank you very much, AMD, for sending me one uh, so I could actually test it. Thank you again, guys, and see you in the next video. Cheers.